Welcome back, Sethling here. And I'm finally back from Awesome Games Done Quick. I spent all last week in Washington, D.C. for the event. If you don't know what Awesome Games Done Quick is, it's a live stream charity marathon all about speedruns and speedrunning. Uh, and it's a week long. And one of the events at AGDQ this year was a Super Mario Maker blind race. Uh, blind doesn't mean that anyone's blindfolded or anything. It means that the players hadn't seen the levels before. And they played eight levels in two teams of four, and kind of raced each other. And this was one of the levels they played. This is my level Killbox. And it was pretty cool to get to design a level for the for the race. Uh, so I thought I would show it to you. Some of you have already seen this, but for those of you who haven't, or those of you who want to learn more about it, uh, I thought I would show it. Uh, so it's, it's called, called Killbox because there's all these boxes. And as you saw on the first screen, the, the challenge doesn't start until you press the P switch. So the first challenge pretty, is pretty easy there, it uh, kind of gets you used to the idea of the kill box concept. Um, but uh, then this one is probably the hardest challenge out of all of them. And especially because you don't really know when the bombs are going to blow up. Uh, so you have to kind of like go for it and hope that they're not going to blow you up. Uh, they, they automatically get triggered by these fire bars up at the top. Uh, you can see I just got hit because I, I didn't know that that bomb was going to blow up. But it's okay. There's these vines up here that actually one of the teams made use of. The other didn't even see. Uh, so this room, you when you press the P-switch, you'll get all these platforms to stand on, but you have to make sure you get through the room before the P-switch effect ends. When you press the P-switch determines where the dry bones are in their cycle, so you kind of want to time it with that a little bit. Uh, it's a pretty hard room to do small, but hopefully I can make it. And if I do make it, then I will get through to the first checkpoint, and actually the only checkpoint in the level. Uh, next room we have is this little star figure, and it looks pretty innocent at first, but when you put, press the P switch, these munchers come down from the ceiling, and <laughs> they are a little bit hard to, to work around, but you know what you're doing? This is probably the best strategy to get through the room, is just jump on the bottom left and, and, and get through it. Uh, okay, so here we have a room with some very fast-moving spike tops, they're on conveyor belts. Of course, when you press a P switch, the conveyor belts will stop. Uh, and there's a couple of different strategies you can use for getting through this. One is, well, I just kind of damage boosted through it. Not too bad. And there, I actually have seen a lot of people use different strategies for this. And then here's the final room. It's just a Bowser. Uh, if I can just... Uh, <laughs> okay. We kind of jumped at the same time. Let's just try that again. <laughs> that was just kind of unlucky, I think. Uh, oh. Uh, I'm just going to keep trying this until I get it. Uh, I find the best strategy here is... Wow, he's aggressive. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to be able to show it off. I find that the best strategy is just to jump over him, but it only works if he's not crazy aggressive. I, I actually think that Bowser is probably one of the most random enemies, and for that reason I don't really like including him that much in my levels, but there you go. A really, thing, a really funny thing actually happened in the race, and I doubt I'll even be able to repli replicate it. Uh, one of the teams kind of, uh, I think Bowser jumped right as they pressed, well, what happened? Let, let's see. Let me, uh, let me edit the level again. So when you press the P switch, Bowser falls onto this little platform here. Uh, and I think what happened is when that P switch effect ran out, Bowser jumped. And these two coins, uh, well, they start out as block, they turn to coins. Uh, when he jumped, they turned back into blocks, and it actually killed Bowser. And in fact, you can even uh, kind of cheese this room by doing something... Oh, that's not, not what I meant to do. By doing something kind of similar, you wait until Bowser jumps off the platform on his own, uh, kind of into the coins, and it might take a while is the only thing. Eh, he's coming at me. <laughs> Where'd he go? There he is. Uh, so if I do it right now, <laughs> he actually dies because the coin turns into a solid block. And So that's, uh, that's one way to cheese the room if you're willing to wait. Of course, in a race, you don't necessarily want to wait all that long, uh, but that's that's one strategy you can use for that room. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's a couple ways around here, around this room. There's some, uh, some one-way obstacles. Um, this room, again, I think the best strategy is always just to jump on the bottom right, unless one of the munchers happens to fall down. One of the cool things about this room, though, is if you do get a muncher on one of these platforms and you don't want it to be there, uh, I'm gonna have trouble doing this. <laughs> anyway, you can you can kind of stand on the platform next to the muncher and let the platform fall, and then the muncher will fall with it. And these these platforms respawn after they fall. Uh, these are the like donut. I don't know what the, what you call them, but 
these, uh, they kind of like wiggle like that and then they fall. And so if, if you can get on top of, there, there's no way I'm going to do this without dying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Uh, the dry bones room straightforward. One thing I will note is that there's a little pow mechanism here that makes sure that basically as soon as you hit the, the P-switch, all of the blocks that turned into coins get knocked down. And what that means is that when it turns, when the P-switch effect turns off, that you won't have any of those platforms to stand on. So it guarantees that you die instead of just kind of like getting stranded. And I think it's a lot better to force the player to die than to force them to get stranded and have to manually restart the level. Although this is at least before the checkpoint, so... Because uh, if you, in Mario Maker, if you press, like... If you if you select manually to restart the level, it actually starts from the beginning rather than from the checkpoint. This is my favorite room, the room with the bombs. Uh, just because it's so kind of chaotic and there's so many different strategy, strategies you can use. I think it's worth getting the mushroom here. Because if you can get through this room with the mushroom, the dry bones room is pretty much a freebie. Because uh, it can it can be pretty hard to actually get through that dry bones room because they throw uh, all the uh, uh, all the bones at you. Now sometimes you get you get crap like this though, where uh, yeah the <laughs> the the bombs didn't exactly clear out a lot of, of room for me. So you have to kind of manually clear it out. Oop. But that can be that can be difficult because these things have a fuse and they like to blow up on you. And you never know when the fuse is going to be up. Ugh, okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys the level. If you want to check out the other levels in the race, I have a link in the video description where you can see... Uh, well, you can see the race itself, and then also, also all the other levels. And I think there were some really good levels in, in this race. I think people generally thought that the levels were well designed, so uh, definitely check out the other levels as well. But this is a really fun race to be uh, a designer for, and I hope you guys liked my level as well. Alright, that's about it. Thanks for watching.